Hey y'all, Tay here. So especially with how everyone's kind of talking about AI right now, this is a little topical and it's really an application of how AI can be used towards espresso and sort of, sort of towards commercial workflow. It was pretty fun. It was a project that I got to work on towards my major and required that I pull a lot of espresso and a lot of testing and a lot of really bad espresso intentionally. So it was tons of fun. So let's get into it. So I was still working as a barista during my last semester of undergrad and I was studying a class called computer vision. This class had a senior design project to it. I could definitely see how the topics that it covered could help with the workflow that I was experiencing as a barista. So at this cafe, we had spent years with a semi-automatic machine, meaning that we had to manually stop every single shot that we were pulling. And we were really in the habit of paying attention to how those shots performed. This was detrimental to our throughput, especially during rushes. So I eventually talked the ownership into switching over to a new volumetric machine that was really hot on the market, the Sinesso S series. Specifically, we purchased the S300. And actually, fun fact, it was the first S300 in North America. This was a revelation to our workflow, but it did have some downsides. So because it was volumetric, we no longer had to manually stop the shots. It would just do that automatically, pretty reliably and consistently, not perfectly, but it was pretty good at the time. But especially during rushes, we didn't spend nearly as much time paying attention to exactly how these shots performed. Sure, we could always just glance at the shot timers and make sure that every shot is pulling at around the same amount of time. That would be pretty solid, but there's all of these other variables that might be hidden in the performance of the shot that you'd catch if you were actually paying attention visually to the shot. For example, it's definitely possible to have an uneven extraction, but still have a shot that runs at about the same time that I want it to with a really good extraction. So really that just begged the question, is there some sort of AI or visual detection that could do this sort of calculation automatically and just kind of spit out a value to you or, or qualify the quality of the shot in much of the same way that the shot timer does for you? So in a sentence, the whole idea of this project was to be able to visually and automatically categorize the quality of a shot of espresso. And because this was an espresso that I was used to using for years, there were certain categories I knew I wanted to look out for, specifically striping, balance, and how evenly the coffee gets saturated. So in terms of striping, yes, I know that some espressos don't necessarily need to be striping. I've had plenty of great espresso that doesn't do that, but this espresso specifically, I noticed really great shots ended up having a bit of tighter striping going in on the bottomless extraction visually. So that was a quality that I wanted to look out for. And for the second category, balance, this idea was how evenly does the entire extraction look on the bottom of the basket? So is there a lighter spot? Is there a darker spot? Is there like a gradient going across the espresso? If that's present, then I know that there's some sort of unevenness to the extraction. And then with the third category, saturation, I more wanted to do a quantitative value instead of a qualitative value. So this is more about from the moment that coffee starts to appear on the bottom of the basket, how long does it take for the entire basket to be saturated? Ideally, you'd see this happen all at once. So ideally, this time would be very, very short. So if it was longer, if it took a long time for sort of the whole basket to start filling out, and there was a bit of a gradient as it was all getting saturated, they gave me a sense that maybe this was a less balanced saturation of the puck. The setup was pretty simple. So first, I would have a camera angled underneath a bottomless port filter. Ideally, out of the way of the actual flow of the extraction. Um, otherwise, you know, I would have a wet camera. And I just captured shot after shot after shot, intentionally getting a lot of bad shots, a lot of good shots, getting as much data as I could so that way I had a lot to work with in terms of creating an algorithm that would be able to catch what it's looking for. And this part ended up being kind of tricky because if you've ever worked on commercial equipment before, you'll know that sometimes they're surprisingly forgiving. So even if I tamped an incredibly crooked shot, it would still come out pretty decent. So I just had to try shot after shot until I got all of the sort of categories I was looking for. And the real magic happens in the software, which is all written in Python. So the process works by first pulling in a video file and then only capturing about the first four seconds of the data. This was primarily so that way the processing speed would be high enough that it would be a decent response for the user to quickly identify the shot before you know the next shot is coming up. So those first four seconds are captured as individual frames, but I grabbed the first frame and I want to use that frame to identify exactly where the basket is in the frame. Because the thing you always have to remember with computer vision is, there's a lot of things that you take for granted that computers actually can't figure out very easily. So for example, figuring out where the basket is in a picture. So it took a little trial and error. We ended up trying three different ways to identify where the basket was, and the third one ended up being the best. First, we started out with something called surf corner detection, which essentially detects features in an image. And the idea was we could tune it so that way we would detect one big circle in the image. The problem with this is it essentially is looking for contrast on the image. 
and the really contrasty parts of the image were actually those individual holes in the basket. So there was actually less contrast at the entire circle, and it was less inclined to identify the circle as opposed to the individual little holes in the basket. So then we moved away from that and tried image pre-processing instead. So basically, grab the first frame and the last frame of the video. We assumed that the first frame had no espresso coming out of the basket, and the last frame had a fully saturated basket. And essentially, if we did a little bit of blurring and filtering, and then we subtracted those two images, the most different part of the image would be where the, the, the holes are in the basket. This worked most of the time, but occasionally, if for some reason someone was like blocking a part of the image during one frame, or there was a slight change in the lighting, that would be picked up between those two images, and then it would think that the basket might have been in that section of the image where something changed slightly. So in this example, I was actually walking around during the video and blocked this light as I was pulling the shot. So it actually saw that difference in the light between the two frames and thought that that was part of the extraction too. So the third and final technique was kind of a combination of the two, but also much, much more complicated, unfortunately. So like the first technique, we did surf detection, but like the second technique, we also did a little bit of image pre-processing to make things a little bit easier to detect. We ended up taking advantage of the fact that the surf corner detection was really prone to picking up the individual holes. So that meant if we took all of the key points identified by the surf corner detection and then took the mode size of it, because most of those are basically the same size because all those holes are the same size, just took the mode size of them and then only grabbed those, generally that was just the basket. But there are still a couple of stragglers, so we have to filter those out. So in order to do that, I had to find the x, y coordinates of the average of all these new key points, slowly go outwards until I find that I'm no longer really adding more useful key points. Still, this is totally prone to noise. We are definitely just pointing a camera at a really shiny object, and so there's plenty of glare on occasion, but generally this, this works pretty well. Now that I know where the basket is, I'm gonna finally do some analysis. So first, the easiest thing is gonna to be to detect the saturation. So again, I'm focusing on how quickly does the entire puck saturate, because that gives me a sense that the entire puck is being extracted at the same time. What we do is we take the first frame, and then as we move through the subsequent frames, we slowly start paying attention to the key points that essentially disappear or change into no longer an edge, but more of kind of like a blur. And that is what the coffee looks like as opposed to the hole. And as this process happens through the frames, we are able to calculate a percentage of how many of these key points are going away. And basically the all encompassing number is how many seconds or really milliseconds does it take for that number to get from 0% to 100%. And by the way, in this test, we actually found that it's more effective to use the grayscale images as opposed to the hue. So we're just working with grayscale two-dimensional images. And that's in contrast with the rest of the detection, which we instead found worked best with hue. So there's two types of images. There's RGB or there's HSV, where RGB is concerned with the specific colors and that's just three different layers of the image. And to make a grayscale image, you just kind of combine the three. But HSV is hue, saturation, and, and value. But we're specifically looking at hue. So hue is kind of like whatever color it is. So for example, the basket is kind of like a grayscale sort of silver, whereas espresso is more of a red, kind of brown color to it. And as I say this, I realize it seems like it would always be best to just detect everything by hue, but because saturation was specifically in terms of the presence of coffee, as opposed to the presence of the holes, actually the, the grayscale works best. But in terms of these other two measurements that I'm making being striping and, and evenness, I'm no longer concerned with the presence of the holes. I'm more concerned with the color that's appearing on the bottom of the basket. So all the data of the video had to be condensed into a single image where X is the index of all the key points that were determined. Y is the index in time. And each of those pixels in that grid represents the hue of each of those key points in time. And the whole reason that I'm feeding the system a really strange image instead of a video is because videos are inherently much more computationally intensive to process. Whereas if I have all the data that I need in just a single image, the whole process will run much, much more quickly. This really strange image that's not really human readable, but more machine readable is then fed into a neural network, which is a whole other thing. But to sort of condense it down, it's really just a series of filters and a learning algorithm where you teach it categories. It uses these filters to create an output. And if it's wrong, it kind of goes back and adjusts to learn 
exactly what it did wrong and, and increase the accuracy as it's bringing in this data. So for example, if I showed it a video of a really good shot that had a lot of striping, it would have this grid, it would take it in, and I would tell it, hey, this is a good video, and it would work its magic to determine what about that video it makes it a good category. And I would do the same sort of thing for the other less good categories, like an unbalanced shot, and it would still learn that process of what an unbalanced shot looks like. So how did all this work? Um, well, parts of it worked really well and parts of it not so much. So again, the detection worked pretty well. It pretty reliably caught where the coffee was in the basket, which is great. But in terms of the more complicated part with the neural network, things got a little more challenging. So it took a lot of tuning. The neural network required a lot of tinkering and there was also some filtering going on with the original image. And there frankly wasn't a ton of data to train with. So when it finally came to using the algorithm to detect exactly what category of shot it was experiencing, we only managed to get about 66% accuracy, which in terms of a neural network is pretty decent. I mean, beating chance is honestly pretty challenging, but definitely the sense was that if we got way more data, things would get much more precise and the system would work a whole lot better. But again, I was pulling shots in a cafe at night and it was really challenging to get every single category in a big, population of those videos. So it would have taken a really long time, didn't have the time for it. I was just trying to get a grade in, so, and it, it worked out okay. So again, I think this has some pretty interesting applications. I don't know if we're gonna see any espresso machines with cameras on them, but I wouldn't be too surprised if in like the long future, we might see something like that, especially with how cheap cameras are. It's like we're putting cameras on everything. So I don't know, I think it'd be really fun and I think it'd be really cool if you just saw like a big four group with like four different cameras pointed at all the groups and you had to wipe them clean every once in a while or if they had like little spray washers like a Volvo. I don't know, it'd be absurd, but this whole project is kind of absurd. So you're, you're getting a sense of the stuff that I like to work on. But yeah, that's, that's about it. Uh, the project worked out pretty well. We had a lot of fun doing the presentation and the response was pretty positive. So I'm really happy I tried it out. It was, it was pretty fun. So y'all let me know what you think. I don't know if anyone else has done any neural network or, or computer vision projects in terms of coffee. Let me know if that's something you've ever worked on. I'm really curious to find out if there's been some, some more precise work on this than, than mine. That'd be, that'd be great news. So, so let me know if you think this is actually even useful. Um, I'm really grateful that I had the opportunity to work on this for class credit. Um, and it was a ton of fun. So, um, I hope you enjoyed learning about it. See ya.